right, uh, it's getting darker the more the day is going on here, and it's not uh, even nighttime, but uh, I made the decision to unhook the fertilizer spreader here. I don't think we're gonna get the lime, and even if we do, it's gonna be one, too muddy to do any spreading out in the field. I don't wanna be putting ruts in, spreading it because uh, no-till. For two, if I wait till the ground's frozen, when they bring damp lime, I'm thinking this stuff's gonna be frozen and it's not going to uh, go through that spreader. So at this point, I'm just gonna let it go till spring now. I have no other choice. Um, these guys just can't get their work done. So uh, I should have did a cold start on this. It's fired right up, but the batteries were very weak. Uh, it, it was slow to crank, but it did start right up. This will probably be the last time this 986 is gonna run for uh, 2018. Next time we uh, start this thing will be 2019 in the spring. So the reason I'm running it now, I wanna try to charge up the batteries a little bit here. And once they're uh, once this thing runs for a while, I want to uh, park it in its winter home and remove the batteries because Thanksgiving day, they want a low of 11 degrees and only a high of 26. So, um, weak batteries cold i want to get them inside and get them on the charger so we're done with this for the year and uh hey if they bring lime it's just gonna have to sit on a pile until spring till, till the weather's nice and it's fit uh so we unhook the uh, fertilizer spreader that's not the easiest thing uh you would think all i'd have to do is just put the jack down and pull the pin not the case with this that jack isn't doing anything I have a farm jack on the back because this thing will dump back so and the pin was all bound up you can see how much it moved just from pulling the pin and moving that much might have been enough to topple it off of that farm ratchet jack but it stayed I have the wheels blocked uh, it's gonna sit there now till spring so my battery in my car was low because it's not getting run so I got to charge this stuff up and make a decision what batteries I want to leave out here. So this is going to go right into here next to the 560. I left plenty of room here in case I buy another tractor. I think I said that before. So, and the roof leaks right about there. So I want to stay this way. So I'm going to let this run, let it warm up, uh, let the batteries charge up. And uh, last time for 2018, the 986 will be running here. So I'll come back. All right, I think that's about where I want to put it. Uh, I could get it closer here, but I, I want to leave some room if I do decide to work on those brakes uh, this winter. I think I have to see where this roof leaks. There's the hole, and I did put uh, silicone over it, but it's still leaking. I don't know if that's not the right hole in the roof or what, but it looks like it's still going to drip on the tractor, so maybe I will get it over a little bit. I had plans of buying a, a tricycle front end uh, H or uh, M or a 300 or 400 and you can pull, <laughs> I could just pull it in there and uh, the narrow front end would fit and it wouldn't leak so I don't know, let me scoot it over a little. Yeah, I think we'll scoot it over just a bit. I know I'm real fussy but uh, it's, it's, hey imagine being me and having to be this fussy. It drives me nuts. All right, so we've been running for a little while now. Uh, charging is still for up. Uh, it's it's coming back down, so oil pressure still through the roof, still being cold. But uh, I'm pretty sure, unless something changes drastically with our weather, uh, if we'd have a February that we'd have about a week at 70 degrees, like we have had already. Um, this is going to be it. So shut down the 986 for the last time for 2018. And there it is, 2018. Baled some hay, mowed some hay, uh, spread some manure. <laughs> did a lot for me this year. I used this a lot more in 2018 than I did in 2017. So made some improvements, still need some work. So it's been a good tractor so far, uh, especially for 2018. Like I said, I used it a heck of a lot more. Um, 
I did, I can't, this is fogged over the tack. I did shine it up enough to read the hours and I did write down the start at the year and the end of the, well, I can check the end of the year, but I wrote down the start of the year on everything. I have the hours for everything written down and I cannot find that paper. I'm still looking for it. If I find that paper, I will let you guys know how many hours I put on each one of my tractors. Um, I'm guessing this had a lot more. I know the 685, I have the date written on the filter and I changed those filters right in the spring and uh, I'm right around 140 hours and I know I put 150 hours on it last year uh, which to some guys might not sound like a lot and other guys it sounds like a lot but then again I'm dividing that between four or five tractors um, this here is probably close to that 150 hour range so with the two of them 300 hours and then the 395 and 560 probably only got two hours on this year if that so um, but then again, it's how I farm. Uh, I have somebody do my planting. <laughs> I don't do any tillage. Um, so basically the hours I put on are going to be the application type stuff, spraying, spreading, um, and hay making. So, and hay is one of the smallest parts of the business here. So whatever, I, it was enough. <laughs> it's enough for me. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to disconnect these batteries and get them out of here and get them up in the warm. Um, I should take my car for a ride to charge up the battery because that was really down um, really down so that needs that needs to go for a ride I might go up and check on my neighbor see if his beans are still out see if the John Deere is still sitting up there um, so I ended up making a whole video about just unhooking the spreader and parking the 986 but uh, <laughs> I I could probably talk for hours so anyway um, I still want to run the 685 that still has the battery in but I have a load of uh, chaff I want to take up to the fields so I'll probably use that tractor and that was a new battery this year so I don't know I'll come back with you and taking these batteries out of this isn't major they're on the sides here uh, you'd basically take that front cover off uh, I gotta find a half inch wrench here um, it's uh, inconvenient enough that it's not a even, even a five minute job unless you're ready to go set up here with everything uh, there was a thing on the news uh, it was on the news what was it last year a farm had uh, somebody uh, don't even have a half inch wrench in there that's something to take note of I got to go through all my toolboxes too this winter that's another job we're gonna do um, there was a thing in the news I guess it was last year of a farm that somebody came onto the farm and they took all the batteries, they robbed all the batteries out of the equipment that was available and uh, easily accessible. And uh, the type of tractors that the uh, batteries were stolen from, they were uh, not like these old ones here. These old ones are fastened down and buckled in and it's not, a, it's not just a quick uh, grab and dash operation in most of them. Um, that's one thing with a lot of these older pieces of equipment. They really, uh, on the new ones, I think you've just popped the hood in the front and that's right where it is, but, uh, eh, it doesn't matter. I have them in a separate location. So, all right. So I'm going to keep working at this. I'll come back. Later. All right. We got the left side out. Now I get the right side off, uh, with these, uh, K and M steps on, it's a lot more accessible to your batteries. It's just night and day difference <laughs> to be able to get to them. Um, so uh, one of the arguments I've heard guys make uh, as far as taking the batteries out of equipment um, in the winter time, a lot of guys like to leave them in um, just because uh, what I've heard is a lot of guys say, well, what if there's a fire? What if uh, the building is on fire and then all your batteries are out and you can't get your equipment out of the building? Well, that is a very serious uh, concern for most farmers. Um, I guess it's basically up to the individual farmer and how you want to evaluate risk uh, <laughs> as far as what I'm trying to say is uh, there's no electric in this shed down here and there's really no electric in the barn itself uh, I have it off um, most times the only time I'm going to turn it on is when I need some and the power stops at the dairy barn it doesn't come down here um, where these tractors where this first tractor sits I think we're about uh, 90 to 100 feet away from the dairy barn which is not enough in a catastrophic fire. Heaven forbid something like that would ever happen. Um, so there is no electricity. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, I'm trying to think of other natural causes of 
something like that. Uh, lightning, of course, is another thing. In the winter time, you're not as likely to have lightning. Um, if we do have lightning, the barn here, even down where I'm at, there is lightning protection. Uh, not to say that it's not going to work right, um, but at least it is there. And uh, uh, in a case of anything like that happening, and like I said, heaven forbid, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I've been a volunteer fireman for long enough now to know what that's like i've seen barns and that kind of stuff um some guys won't even talk about it i'm not afraid to talk about it and uh try to do things to prevent it as best you can uh so uh, if there would be something freak that would happen um and i would have an opportunity to get equipment out of here um, there's at least one or two tractors that always have the battery in and i have chains and it depends on how much time i have um, how bad the fire would be um, and who would be here from the fire company there are firefighters in our department who are farmers and they might be able to give me a hand to get as much out of the shed as i can on the other hand how much do you want to be that close to a fire after all they are just things um, i do like my equipment but uh, in the end depending on what's going on it's not something you want to risk your life for so that's just kind of my little little talk on that uh, but i understand some guys they want to keep the batteries in and everybody's situation is a little bit different if you have uh, a shop with electricity or especially one of the things that gets a lot of guys and I have seen it are guys that heat their shop with wood um, that's one of the one of the more common ways that uh, that stuff starts um, there is no heat in here there is no electricity um, with the batteries all being unhooked then there's less of a chance that the uh, equipment can start a fire itself so um, Nothing I like talking about, but uh, like I say, I am not afraid to uh, offer an opinion on it at least. So, all right, let me get the right side out here. All right, batteries are out. Uh, this car's been idling for at least an hour here. So I'm gonna take it for a ride, go up to my neighbors and uh, see what's going on with the soybeans. So some guys did ask me about this car. They were wondering about it. Uh, it's uh, something I had picked up. It was actually my mother-in-law's and she got a new newer vehicle and or a new vehicle and uh, she had asked if we wanted it and uh, I was able to give her more for the car than they were gonna give her for a trade-in. So I wanted it because it was all-wheel drive. Um, I have my pickup truck, but my wife's car is only two-wheel drive and my wife's car is terrible in the snow. This uh, is a tank at four-wheel drive, uh, but I don't know how much longer I'm gonna hang on to it. Uh, it's been giving me lots of problems that I haven't really been saying anything about yet. All right, so uh, the problems, this car, uh, one of the uh, CV axles or the universals on the front for the four-wheel drive went bad and uh, took it to my buddy's garage ever since he worked on it now it has the death wobbles which uh, if you guys don't know what that is I'm sure you do he hit a bump just right you can't even keep this car on the road so I've been after my buddy to get uh, get it in and he's just been that busy uh, so that's one of the problems with it. And I'm seeing all the beans, and it looks like the John Deere sitting up there is in the exact same. There's just a random dog on the road. <laughs> I'm glad I looked down from the camera. I would have hit somebody's dog. Just a dog running on the road. Anyway, John Deere is still sitting up there, so um, no uh, bean harvest for him. All right, so the battery should be pretty well charged up in this car. I do use this car more in the winter time than I do in the summer. Uh, I'd rather run this in the salt and the slop uh, than my pickup, just because this has way less of a resale value than my pickup, and my pickup has a lot more issues with uh, a lot more steel to rust out than a unibody type of car like this, and uh, I haven't really cared much about uh, uh, sold on this vehicle, so this will be kind of a winter runaround type of car getting parts and stuff. Uh, I'll come back. All right, so the end of another exciting day, an exciting video, I guess you could say. Uh, this is exactly how I want the shed for the winter time. Uh, I can still get my loader in and out uh, and not have to bring my vehicle out uh, after the fresh snow is down. Um, everything is pretty well in its place and uh, should be good to go here. So I'll come back with you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me uh, through these uh, kind of uneventful videos, but uh, try to keep it interesting.